Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the first Pixera presentation of the day. My name is Reiner. I am a project manager and trainer at AB Stumpful, and I will give you in the next 20, roughly 20 minutes, a brief introduction into the world of Pixera. Um, as you may uh, have already noticed, we have a lot of technology here in our booth. There are optical tracking systems in here. There is a uh, wife tracking system in here, uh, there is an air scan in here, uh, really lots of technology in here. Um, however, I'm not going to use this. My part on the presentation side will be a quick introduction into Pixera and into the technical setup you can see right here. So now let's start. And I will start with a fresh project. And um, here on the right and here on the left, you are always or will always see my user interface. So let's go. <coughs> so Pixera, um, our user interface consists of three programming tabs. There is the screen tab. In the screen tab, you um, can put in projection screens, you can put in displays, as well as LED panels. So we have in here a big LED library where you can put in your LED and pre-build the LED you are going to use um, on site. And um, as soon as you've done that, you can advance to the mapping tab. That's our second programming tab. In here, you will fi find your outputs as well as our projector library. We have all available project and manufacturers here in our library and you're free to just add them to your project, pre-build, pre-design your project, um, connect uh, your systems to the outputs, warp everything and then um, do your mappings. Last but not least, we um, have our compositing tab and as you may already uh, see, in here you can find the timeline. Pixar is a timeline based system and um, everything is completely done in real time. So all the changes can be done in real time. There is no play mode or something like that. Um, it's a complete real time media server system. Now let's go back to the screen step. Even though we are not using projectors in here, I'm now going to start with a projection screen and projectors because it's a really important uh, feature of Pixera. So um, for screens, uh, here we have, of course, our, our AB Stumpful library. I'm going to start with a generic screen. And the basic workflow principle is always on the left, you've got the library in each tab. In the middle, you get your workspace. And on the right, you always get your inspector. And as I've got my screen now here in my workspace, I can start and drag it along. And as you can see, as I do this, my position data in my inspector is um, adjusting right along. I can also start and modify my screen, do a white projection, something like that. Or if I want to be more precise, I can also put in values here by hand, of course. And as well, use mathematical functions. So let's go plus two and divide by three, for example. Of course, it is also possible to rotate in here. Now, in our workspace, we have really intelligent snapping technology. So I'm going to add, in order to showcase this, a second screen. Let's resize it. And now with the click of a button, I can snap my screen along my axis, as you can see. And as I snap this, um, you can see that values pop up um, right here on the left side. So um, I'm now basically free to measure where I have to go. Even though it's like two meters apart, I can place this or I can even um, snap this right along um, here to my side and um, add minus two or plus two. And another plus two to bring them apart. Now, once I'm um, satisfied with my um, uh, physical setup in here, I can advance to the mapping tab. And again, in here, we now have our project the database. And you can now start and add projectors to your setup. So let's go for the Panasonic ones, for example. 
So you can see all available types in here. I can also type in the type in here. Let's go for the Panasonic PDD set range. And let's just take a 16K <coughs> and put it right in here. Now, it's the first time that you see we're actually working in a 3D environment. I haven't really used it until now. I haven't really activated it because there was no need for it because for regular um, flat projection most of the time you don't need it. And for these cases we even have the possibility to deactivate the projector's first room and now I'm free to place my projector on my 2D plane. Now let's get back to 3D though. Now I reactivate my projector's body and now I also activate my 3D grid. So it basically just wasn't visible until now. With the click of a button I can activate it. And now I can start and place my projector in 3D space. Let's assume my projector is mounted somewhere on a, on a truss. Now let's place it something like that. Let's extend the projector's first room. And now let's also have a look at our um, lens library. Besides the projectors themselves, you can also select from all the available lens types in our library. So um, let's just go for this lens, for example. I can now also adjust the throw ratio as well as lens shift. There you go. And start to pre-design my project. Now for more complex um, type of, of mappings like our widescreen, which you can see here on the left, we also have intelligent automatism in place. So I will now add another DZ16K and with the click of a button here on the top I can open the auto transform and in here there's a preview which will preview my projector's position in real time and in here I can now tell the system how many projectors I want to use and also the amount of overlap. So let's try out something free, uh, maybe a little bit less overlap. Um, let's go for four, a little bit more. 25 as you can see now this looks really fine that's the setup I want to use and I hit apply and my projectors are set up so there's no need for me to fiddle around in 3d space find the correct position Pixera will just help me doing so of course there's also warping um, you want to do most of the time in a media server and in order to do so with the click of a button you can activate the test pattern and here on the right can now see the warp engine and you can even flip this over to your middle workspace and start to do your warping. Now once you're finished with your projector setup, with your technical setup, you can now advance to compositing. Let me quickly bring up the camera here. There we go. And here same workflow principle as in the other tabs. Drag and drop content right onto my screen. Click scaling my content is scaled and I can now play back and do all the adjustments in real time as you can see. Can even add more layers also by drag and drop. There we go. Do my adjustments and even do something like a keyframe animation. There we go. So now that's it. Um, about the basic introduction. What follows now is um, I will now build the setup you can see here with the two displays and two LED walls in real time for you. And in order to do so I will again start with a fresh project. And now we're not using a projection screen, we're using a display. So I will now go into displays, generic, and choose my 55 inch display. Let's bring up the camera. And this one is in our database 4K. However, I'm going to use full HD outputs. So I'm putting it full HD in here, 1920 by 1080. Now, all I have to do is copy and paste it. And now I'm again going to use my snapping. So I know this is 
14 centimeters apart from another, so I put in 0 0.14, my displays are set up. Now to my LED. I know the top one is the ROE Diamond 2.6. There we go. And I'll start and put in the panel. So you can see now this is a single panel. And in Pixera, I can now set up in here the panel array. So I will put in 6x1, that's my panel array. And that's all I have to do in order to get my LED stripe. And down below on the LED, we can even see the technical speci specifications. So in here you see panel resolution, physical resolution, pixel count, um, information like viewing angles, brightness and weight. And this information can further be used to print our plans, which you can hand over to the technical crew so they have all the technical information for build up. Now, let's again start and place this. I will snap this right along and in order to place this I will now use my mathematical options in here, plus 12 and last but not least the ROE Vanish 8. Put this in here, 3 by 1 array and let's do the same. Snap it right here into the border and it here we go, minus 0 0.12. There we go, my physical setup is done. So now I'm going to advance to mapping. As already said, mapping is not only here for projector and projector mapping and warping, it is also here to connect our outputs. So in the live tab, I can see my uh, systems that are connected to my network. I'm actually running here two Pixera machines, a Pixera 1 for control and, and a Pixera 2 RT for playout. And in Pixera we have quite intelligent network discovery, that's why my clients are already in the system and are ready to use. So the Pixera 2 here is my actual playout client, I can see both graphics cards in here and as you can see we have direct EDAD information displayed here in Pixera. So those are the EDADs being sent from the E2, from the Anchor into our Pixera. Now let's start and do the outputs. So my LED has out free, so I drag and drop it onto my two LED. My left display is out five, and my right display is out one. There we go. Now with the click of the button, F5, I can open my outputs, and let's activate the test pattern, and there we see outputs are mapped. What is missing now is uh, we are running both LEDs through the same LED processor and the bottom LED is shifted 200 pixels down on the processor. That's why both are at the moment displayed on the top. That's of course also something I can do in Pixera. When I select my LED, on the right here you can we see our output and here on the top we see a small LED and to have a little bit more space let's flip this over and in here I can now as you can see in real time shift my LED on my output and let's go back. This one here is shifted 201 pixels down and there we go, our LED is mapped. Now our basic output configuration is already done as you can see. Now let's advance to uh, compositing and throw some content onto it. Let's import some content. There we go and let's start and throw the video onto here. Now, in this setup we have vastly different pixel pitches. Our top LED has something like 1200 by 200 pixels, we have full HD screens and on the bottom we have 300 by 50 pixels. So there's a big difference in pixel pitch. And Pixera now does all the scaling for me. I don't have to make my head around the different pixel pitches and how content will be scaled. As you can see I can just drag and drop it along my LEDs uh, without having to set up, do any further setup. So now let's just increase my video here. Uh, let's take some more videos, put them on here and let's set this to free run. So we'll now loop all the time. Now, I guess um, if you haven't been on a live show, you know the situation. Uh, you are getting content in last minute. The show basically already starts and you have to put in um, videos. You have to exchange stuff. And 
for this situation, for this special kind of situations, we have implemented a feature in Pixara called Live Preview Edit, and Live Preview Edit um, allows you to um, use a second locator on your timeline. So you have one locator playing out content um, and a second locator which actually allows you to work on the same hot running timeline um, whilst playing out with the other locator. So um, all you have to do is activate this feature with the click of a button and as you can see now I've now got two locators here. The white one is still playing out my content and the blue locator now allows me to work on my timeline without influencing my outputs. So what I can do now is with these imported videos I can now go here and do all my timeline work with without actually interfering anything on my timeline. So I can now uh, make this longer, set this to free, free play and even add additional layers as you can see and do keyframing work. Let's do something like this. Take the locator here, go here, let's make it longer, locator here, let's put the video here and here and with the click of a button I have now saved different position keyframes as you can see and I can preview this now in my preview without again influencing my output and check if uh, what I've done um, suits my presentation and <coughs> once I'm uh, happy with the results all I have to do is either slides between preview and live states or activate this button to transition into my new position. If it's now needed to go back again, um, that's also something you can do quite easily. We also have a feature called blend to time and this allows you basically to blend to any time on the timeline without hard cuts. Okay, thank you very much for your time. I hope um, this explains the basics of Pixera um, to you. And if you want to get some more information, deeper information, we have free training stations over there where you can actually see all the warping, all the 3D mapping. And my colleagues are definitely happy to uh, explain more to you. Thank you very much.